Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to cover everything about Edpuzzle. We're going to show you how to sign up for an account. We're going to set up your Edpuzzle class by linking to a Google Classroom. We're going to show you how to find a video to build a lesson around. Then we're going to edit that video to make it shorter. We're going to embed questions, voiceovers, and notes into the video and then assign it to your class. We're going to have a look at the student perspective and how they view an Edpuzzle video. Then we're going to show you how to grade your student responses. Let's get started. Let's visit edpuzzle.com and then we're going to click sign up. Then we're going to click the blue I'm a teacher button to continue. When you sign in, I suggest using your school district Google account. That way you have one less password to have to remember. You will also have to agree to the Edpuzzle terms and conditions to continue. Next, we're going to search for our school name. Type in your school name. There's a chance it's not going to show up and that's okay. If you don't find your school name, you will have the option to add a school at the bottom. Click on add a school and then you're going to have to type in your city and state. Edpuzzle is going to verify that the email address you gave is valid. You're going to receive a verification email. Open up that email and click the yellow verify button. That'll let Edpuzzle know that your email address is valid. Your Edpuzzle account is fully set up now. The next step is to create classes so that you can organize your students. In the upper right hand corner of the screen, click on the My Classes link. Once you have a class set up, you can create videos and assign them to your students. So to create a class, you start by either adding a class manually or you can link an Edpuzzle class with a Google class. That way any students that are in your Google class can be synced up with your Edpuzzle class. When you first try to create a Google Classroom, Edpuzzle will prompt you to ask if you have parental consent to use Edpuzzle. That's part of COPA requirements. So you want to check with your IT department to make sure you have that covered. Next, Edpuzzle will ask for permission to use your Google Classroom account. This gives it access to view your students, to post assignments, and integrate with Google Classroom. Go ahead and click Allow to continue. Along the left, you will see a list of your Google Classes. Put a check mark in the classrooms you want to import, and then click the blue Import Classes button. Now we have an Edpuzzle class that is linked to our Google Classroom. We can tell that these are linked because of the Google Classroom icon that's next to the name of the classroom at the top. Next, let's click on the Students tab. Here we can see all of the students that were imported from your Google Classroom. To the right, you'll see a button labeled Import Students. That lets you resync your student list with your Google Classroom. That's handy if you have students entering your class or leaving your class during the school year. In the upper right hand corner, you'll find a button labeled Class Options. With the Class Options, you can rename this class. You can give it an optional description. Um, if you wanted to, you could also delete the class if you wanted to remove it from Edpuzzle. For each student, you have a button with three dots on it. If you click that button, you have options for the student. You can change their name. You could also reset their password. Generally, they won't use their password if they're logging in with their Google account, but that's handy if you're not using Google for some reason. You could also remove a student from a class. Now that your classroom is set up, let's create a video. Click on the content tab in the upper right hand corner. Along the left side of your screen, you'll find various sources of content. The home page will show you videos that are trending, either in your area or your local state or even the country. Under curriculum, you'll find content that's been curated by Edpuzzle for you. It's organized by grade level, it's organized by topic. These are videos that are used by other teachers around the country. You'll find a link that has the name of your school under content. This includes videos that teachers in your school have created. Under popular channels, you'll find sources of videos that are commonly used in schools. You can also search directly under YouTube for videos that cover almost any topic. For this demo, we're going to create an Edpuzzle based on a crash course video of the Civil War. To find my video, I'll click Crash Course on the left side. Then in the search bar, I'll type Civil War and hit enter. Once I find the video I want, I click the thumbnail to view it in the Edpuzzle video player. From here, let's click the edit link on the right hand side to get right to the video editor. First thing we want to do is Notice that this video total running time is 12 minutes. That's kind of long for a video. So if you want to cut the video, you can trim off the front, you can trim off the back, and then you can also trim for the middle. To start, I'm going to start by trimming the middle by taking the handlebar at the front of the video and dragging it over to about a minute into the video. Now I can see that the total time is reduced to 11 minutes. Now I can also trim from the end of the video. I pull the handlebar from the end of the video to about halfway through the video. This will make my video considerably short. If I want to cut from the middle of the video, I move the playhead to the area that I want to add the cut. Then I click the Add Cut button. 
move the playhead to a different part of the video and then add another cut there. Now if I want to delete the piece in the middle, I drag one handlebar to the other handlebar until I get the delete icon. Once I see the delete icon, I release the mouse and now I have cut from the middle of the video. From here, I can see the total time is reduced to a little under five minutes and I can preview the video with the cuts. Now let's add a voiceover. A voiceover lets you record your own words and replace the audio of the video. It's a good way to refocus your students and add more information. Click on the voiceover tab, then move the playhead to where you want to add your voiceover. Then click the start record button. The first time you record, the browser may ask for permission to use your microphone. Click allow to continue. This is important. It will be on the test. After I'm done, click the stop recording button. After it finishes processing the audio, I'm able to preview it here. This is important. It will be on the test. You can record multiple voiceovers throughout your Ed puzzle. That way you can share more messages with your students throughout the video. You can remove a voiceover by clicking the trash can icon. Now let's add a question to our Ed puzzle. Click on the questions tab at the top. Underneath your video, you'll find the timeline for your video. The black dot is the playhead. You can drag that playhead along the timeline to show where you want to insert your question. Now let's add a multiple choice question. We do that by clicking the blue multiple choice question button on the right of the screen. We start by adding the question to the first text box. Then we add our answers in the text boxes below. We can add additional answers by clicking the add another choice option. Then we can use the check mark and the X button to indicate which answer is the correct one. We want to check mark next to the answer that's correct. Then we click save to save our question. Here we see that our question is added to the timeline. It's represented by the teardrop icon at the bottom. We can drag that teardrop to move it along the timeline if we wanted to. We also have the option to add additional questions at the same spot. So you could embed a multi-question quiz here in the middle of the video. Now we can move the playhead to just before our question in the timeline so that we can preview what it looks like from the student perspective. Or the South. Sometimes people call the union the blue. Here's a quick preview of the question we just added. It shows our question, shows our answers. Once we're happy with it, we can click continue to move on. Next up, we're going to add an open-ended question. We'll begin by taking the playhead of the timeline and dragging it to a different part of the video. I'm going to put this one closer to the end. Once we have it where we want it, we click the purple open-ended question button. We can type in our open-ended question here. We have some basic editing features like bold, italics, underline. We can do superscripts or subscripts. We can insert a link to another resource if we wanted to do that, or even uh, embed a picture, which we'll do that later in a note. For the math teachers, we have access to the equation editor that lets you create much more complex mathematical equations as part of your question. After we have our open ended question, click the save button to continue. Like the other question, we are able to move the question along the playhead by moving the teardrop icon. We can move the playhead to just before the video, and again, we can preview it from the student perspective. They had massive advantages. First so here we can see when and where it pauses the video to show your question. I'll show you in more detail from a student perspective what this looks like, but for right now, this just gives you an idea of what it looks like. When you're happy with it, click continue to move on. Next, we'll add a note to our video. A note, it pauses and shows a message to your students. Move the playhead in the video timeline to where you want to add your note, then click the note button. So for this note, we're going to put a little warning that the next part of the video is going to be on the next quiz. That's just a way to focus the students and try to the grab their attention. Yeah, I don't think this is quite enough, so I'm going to edit and add an image to it that I downloaded. Just a little warning icon to try to grab their attention a little more. You can uh, import based on the URL if you find the address, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to import using a picture that I downloaded from the internet. You can set the height and width of your image. In this case, I'm going to set it to about 200 pixels. That's a good size. It's not too big, but big enough to grab their attention. Now I'm going to drag the playhead to just before my note preserve preview it again. The union. But the okay, that's a lot more attention grabbing, so we'll click continue because we're happy with that. 
We just about have our video created. Uh, after this, I'm going to show you how to assign it to students using Google Classroom, what it looks like from a student's perspective, and then how to grade it when they submit it. Uh, but for right now, on the left hand side, we can see that all of our video events are in this uh, kind of expanded timeline. So we can click around and preview uh, and see if there's any more changes we want to make. One thing I want to note is that all of your changes are saved automatically, so you don't have to worry about losing your work as you go. Click the finish button to close your Edpuzzle video. Now we're ready to assign our video. From here, click the assign button on the right hand side. You can select the classroom that you want to assign. This is linked to your Google Classroom, remember. You can assign a due date and a start date. Uh, you have the option to prevent skipping, which means your students have to watch the entire video. You can also automatically enable closed captioning. Students can control the closed captioning if they want to, but you can enable it by default. And of course, you can post it to Google Classroom. If you're syncing with Google Classroom, you absolutely want to include that option. You also have the option to share using public links. You could take this link here and copy it and paste it in an email, post it to another website. You also have the option to embed this into another website such as Google Classroom or whatever platform you're using for your websites. Once you have your options set up, go ahead and click Assign. Inside of Google Classroom on the Classwork tab, we can see that the Civil War assignment has been assigned. If we hit the triple dot button, we can edit this assignment to make some minor changes if we need to. That includes uh, updating the topic so that you can organize this into your topics of your classroom. Let's have a look at this from the student perspective. In Google Classroom, the student clicks on the assignment and they can see that your Edpuzzle is an attachment for the assignment. They click the Edpuzzle to visit the website. From here, they have to log in using their Google account. They log in as normal. They see the video and with the timeline underneath it, you can see that your questions are visible in the timeline. Notice that the student can't jump ahead in the video. This is a huge improvement over just sharing a standard YouTube video. Really, you don't know if the student watches the entire video, but in this case, they are forced to do so. As the student reaches the first question, in this case, the multiple choice question we created, the video is paused. They're prompted with the questions and the answers. They have the option to rewatch it if they want to. Once they select their answer, they click submit. They receive immediate feedback if the question was right or wrong. Then they're allowed to continue to the next question. The voiceover plays automatically, but doesn't pause the video. It just overwrites the audio that is part of the video. Now we're coming up to the warning message that we put in the middle of the video. That's gonna pause the video, but not prompt them with a question, and they'll have to click continue before they can proceed. The teardrop icon in the timeline doesn't show green or red, it just shows a neutral gray. That's because there's no right or wrong answer to a note. There's no question associated with it. Next, we're coming up to the open-ended question. This is gonna be a short answer question for the students to answer. There's no right or wrong answer coded within Edpuzzle. So Edpuzzle can't give them feedback if it's right or wrong. It's just gonna tell them that it's gonna be graded later. After they answer the question, they can click submit to move on. Again, Edpuzzle will force them to watch the rest of the video even though there's no more questions to answer. Once a student reaches the end of the video, Edpuzzle tells them that they're done and that they can see their results. When the students click the Show Results button, then the students are able to see that they completed the video and that they have one out of two of the correct responses. That's because one of the answers still needs to be graded. A quick note to remind your student, after they finish watching your Edpuzzle, they have to hop back to Google Classroom to click Mark is Done to signal that they've completed the assignment. Even if there is nothing for them to turn in, they still have to submit the assignment to send the trigger to you to let you know that it's done. Back in the teacher view, we can see that a student has turned in the Edpuzzle assignment. If we want to grade this, we have to go back to Edpuzzle and then from there, we can see that they watched the complete video, when they watched it, when they turned it in, and that if we click on the student, we can see how many times they watch each section of the video. That's a good way to highlight if they got stuck and had to go back and rewatch something. You can see their answers on each of the questions, including the, including the short answer that requires you to grade it. From here, you can give it 100% or a lower grade. You can also give it a comment. One note though, this comment isn't going to be visible from Google Classroom. If a student's going to see the comment, they're gonna to have to log back into Edpuzzle and see it from there. So you might be better off putting a comment directly into Google Classroom instead of Edpuzzle. That's the end of the tutorial. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Let me know if I can help.